kata is called gamenate, which means strike to the face. Gamen is the upper lip. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> In this case, you have uh, two opponents. As your opponent goes for his sword, you strike the upper lip, but drive it into his head. And then pull the sword off, because you know there's somebody behind you, turn and thrust into the person behind you and then before the original opponent can recover you come forward and slice down to it These uh, striking movements with using the handle basically shows that you do not have to take a life. You can basically subdue the person without killing them. But within the kata, you, you want to show as many variations as possible. So in these cases, you do end up taking them out. <clears throat> Next one. The ninth kata is called Suetetsuki. like to explain that these forms are done in a, a moving Zen feeling. The sword starts off slowly and then builds speed and then explodes out of the scabbard. And from there, again, it starts off slowly and then cuts. And then again, starts off slowly and then cuts. And then when you return the sword to the scabbard, it starts off slowly and then is put in and then slows down so that you don't get the slapping noise. Everything is done in to control the point of the sword. In fact, this is a good time to, to talk about the sword itself. The handle is called a, a sta. So, this sword is only used uh, out of doors. This, uh, the length of it, the fact that you raise it over your head, you couldn't use this inside a a house where the ceilings are only eight feet tall. The uh, the body end is called the uh, tashira. These little uh, things underneath the wrapping here are called menuki, and these are basically to grab with your little fingers to hold the sword tight. The forefinger and thumb are relatively loose. You want to hold the sword with just the little fingers. This gives you mobility of the sword. There is a matching one on the opposite side that you would hold with your left hand. 
the right hand guides the sword, the left hand cuts. The sword god is called the Suba. And then this collar here is called the Habaki. And it fits in the Koiguchi of your of your Saya and keeps it from, from rattling around. The blade, the cutting edge is called the Ha. This off-colored uh, piece here is called the Hamon, and that is where it is um, dipped into water and basically crystallizes the edge to give it its hardness. There is a ridge line here on it, and then a groove called a he. The back side is called a mune. The point is called a kisaki. The scabbard is called a saya. And this here is called, called a sageo, and it's attached to the kuregata which is part of the, the saya. And that keeps the scabbard from sliding through your belt. The segeo in, in battle would be tied to your waist. And it can be used to tie up your kimono if you're wearing such a, a, a garment in your regular civilian clothing. The, Kogi that we wear is basically it only has three quarter sleeves. So you don't have to worry about the ska getting caught up in your sleeves. But if you're wearing a kimono, it would just basically flow down past your hand. In fact, they, a lot of them had pockets in them because the kimono itself doesn't have any. Where you would carry things <clears throat> for, on your person. The uh, the obi is basically a belt, goes around the uh, kekogi. Keko, it means practice. Gi means suit. So it basically is a, a practice uniform that I'm wearing. <laughs> the pants that I'm wearing is called the hakama. And these are basically, a, it's a divided skirt so that uh, you could ride on horseback. 